Okay, this video is a follow-up to theoretical yield number one video, and you need to see that video before you do this one. What we're going to do in this video is focus on uh, two objectives. The first objective will be to calculate for this reaction the um, percent yield of carbon dioxide, and the second objective will be to calculate the mass of the other reactant that was used in the reaction with 10 grams of propane. So just to summarize what we did in the first video, we were given 10 grams of propane and an unbalanced combustion reaction where propane is reacted with oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water. We took the 10 grams of propane, converted it into moles, and then utilized the ratio from the balanced equation to find the moles of CO2 produced and then the moles of CO2 were converted into grams. And we see that the theoretical yield for this reaction is actually 29.9 grams of CO2. Now, the first thing that we want to do with this information is calculate what we call a percent yield. And the percent yield tells us something about the efficiency of the reaction and is equal to what's called the actual yield the actual yield divided by the theoretical yield, which I'm just going to abbreviate like this, times 100. All right. Now, if we assume for this reaction, and, and uh, the thing about percent yield problems, normally you're going to have to be given the actual yield. So for this reaction, we're going to assume that when we carried it out in the laboratory, after calculating the theoretical yield, we were only able to purify 24.3 grams of carbon dioxide. So to find the percent yield, it will be 24.3 grams of CO2 obtained divided by 29 0.9 grams times 100. So the percent yield for this reaction, assuming 24.3 grams of CO2 is the actual yield, should be approximately 81.3 percent. All right. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is we want to calculate the mass of the other reactant that was used in the reaction. In other words, we started, we started this whole process out with 10 grams of propane, and we assumed that that 10 grams of propane would react with a certain amount of oxygen, and in the first video we assumed that the oxygen was in excess. We made this assumption because we wanted to simplify the problem and the assumption basically meant that we had all the oxygen necessary to react with the 10 grams of the propane. But now we want to turn the problem around and we want to find out actually how many grams of oxygen was required to react with the 10 grams of the propane. So what we're going to do is go back to the moles of propane, I'm going to circle it, and we're going to use this and a ratio from the balanced equation to find out how much oxygen in mass was required to react with the 10 grams. So I'm going to pull down the moles of the propane. All right, and like in the first video, we're only going to be concerned with the process of how we do this. So I'm just going to carry numbers out to four decimal places and I'm going to drop everything after that. We're not going to be concerned about rounding or significant figures. Now we're going to use unit multiplier once again so I'm going to put a line under this, a fraction bar underneath it and it's over one. And then we're going to be multiplying the moles of propane so we need a multiplication sign and a fraction bar. And since we're in units of moles which is the same as 
the units of the coefficients in the balanced equation. What we need now is the ratio that relates the moles of oxygen to the moles of propane. And we're solving for the oxygen. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the coefficient 5 in the numerator or the top of this fraction, followed by a proper label for O2, divided by the coefficient for propane, which is 1, and the label, which indicates it's propane. And you see moles of propane cancels with moles of propane. And the product of this reaction will give us the moles of oxygen, which is 1.1335. Again, all I did was carry the numbers out five decimal places, and then I dropped everything that came after. So this would be the moles of oxygen required to react with this many moles of propane. Now I want the mass, so we have one more step, multiplication sign in a fraction bar. We need the molar mass of O2. So like in video number one, we come down to the periodic table. And this is molecular oxygen, which means that it's diatomic. There's two atoms. We see that the atomic mass is 16, so it's going to be 2 times 16, or 32, and that's units of grams per mole. Now again, this is unimultiplier method, so the value of our O2 is over 1. And we're solving for mass, and we want the moles to cancel, so we're going to need grams in the numerator. And we're going to need moles in the bottom, and 32 goes up here in the top. You see moles are canceling, and we've successfully solved for grams of oxygen. And that value should be something close to 36 point three grams of O2. I'm going to circle this and label it. This is the mass of O2 required to react with the propane with 10 grams of propane. So there were two main objectives to this video. The first was we wanted to calculate a percent yield. That calculation is shown here. Again, percent yield is equal to the actual yield. This would be the yield you actually get in a laboratory setting if you ran the reaction for real. And that value is divided by the theoretical yield, which is the maximum amount of mass of a particular product based on the balanced equation. So the percent yield is the actual yield divided by the theoretical times 100. The theoretical or the percent yield in this case was about 81 percent. And then we calculated the mass of the other reactant required to react with the original 10 grams of the propane. In the next video, we will explore what happens when we have a chemical reaction that includes a limiting reactant.